Um, yeah, I, uh, I I just had uh, one last question, you know, uh, that uh, was asked by uh, one of my professor uh, from Bangladesh, a very respected, you know, anthropologist that both UK and USA are responding to COVID-19 in a neoliberal mode. People are dying every day. COVID-19 mostly kills people deemed to be burdened to the healthcare and of the welfare. Uh, what do you think about it? Professor Zahir Ahmed, one of the very uh, respected uh, anthropologists of Bangladesh. Well, there are a few things to notice. One thing to notice is the deaths are needless. It is possible to stop them. Uh, we've seen it not far from you. Uh, East Asia, when China on January 10th, China, Chinese scientists had sequenced had identified the virus, sequenced the genome, sent it to the world. Every virologist in the world knew what they were facing. Some countries reacted, countries that cared enough about their citizens to react. Right on the border of China, South China, center of the epidemic, Vietnam had no deaths till very recently when there's a handful of visitors no deaths right on the border of South China. South Korea had a serious pandemic, overcome came it, never even had a lockdown. And New Zealand has practically no deaths. Taiwan under control. Now China itself, the center of the crisis, has it under control. The economy is now functioning. Uh, GDP increased by 5% last year. Every other country is in almost every other country is in recession. Uh, Africa, which is not the richest place in the world, overcame it. They began to react immediately. As soon as the information came, the health ministers in Iraq, in South, uh, South in Africa, gathered, laid down plans. Uh, countries like Senegal, Liberia, with almost no cases poor backward countries. The rich countries can't do it. It's not because of lack of resources, lack of information. It's because of social and political pathologies. Uh, yeah. Back to the crisis. Yes, it can be overcome. Now just take a look at the number of deaths. There's three countries way in the lead in the number of deaths. United States, India, Brazil, each of them is in the hands of an autocratic proto-fascist. Uh, I don't think that's an accident. Way behind them in fourth place is Russia, also not a, exactly a stellar democracy. Then down later you get others. There's things that are happening that are under control. The pandemic is severe. It can be controlled. We've seen it. The deaths are needless. The rich countries could do what they can do in Africa, in Vietnam, in Cuba, in New Zealand, as it can be done. Yeah, Professor Jones, yeah, we have one last question, which is personal question to you, is that, you know, uh, for Bangladeshi students, young students in Bangladesh, what would be, Barshan Rasad was asked this question that if in the future, let's say 100 years down the road, people see this interview, you know, what would you like to tell to them? Question to you, Professor Chomsky. What is your message to the future? My message is very simple. We have a unique, we're in a unique moment of history. It's never happened before. With a confluence of severe crises. If they are not dealt with effectively, uh, the future of human society is very dark. It's unlikely to survive many, very long. But we have answers. Every single question has an answer. And it's been given. Like the pandemic, the answer's been given by very poor countries lacking in resources, but having social cohesion and serious policies. Global warming is an existential crisis. The means to deal with it are feasible. 
have been worked out in detail very persuasively can easily be handled within the means available. Nuclear war can be ended, the threat, by easy means. Uh, the uh, destruction of democracy can be reversed. Every crisis we face can be overcome. It's not going to happen by magic. It's going to be taken, take the, the dedicated engagement on an international level. All of these crises are international. They have to be dealt with by a world community that's committed to it. That can be achieved, but it's going to be a major struggle. Thank you so much, Professor Chomsky, to take us uh, some time in, 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 in the midst of your very busy schedule. We look forward to have future conversations with you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.